this is Christopher Curtis. Although Bud Not Buddy is fictional, many of the situations Bud encounters are based on events that occurred in the 1930s, during a time known as the Great Depression. Although the characters in Bud Not Buddy are fictional as well, some of them too are based on real people. One of the most enjoyable parts of writing is that an author can combine his or her imagination with the traits of real people to build new characters. That is what I did to create the characters of Lefty Lewis and Herman E. Calloway, both of whom are based loosely on my grandfathers. My mother's father, Earl Lefty Lewis, was one of six or seven red caps who worked at the train station in Grand Rapids, Michigan, during much of the Depression. The jobs of Pullman Porter and Red Cap were among the few open to African-American men at the time and carried a certain prestige in the black community. Nonetheless, they were extremely difficult jobs, often marked by 80-hour work weeks, low salary, and virtually no job security. These men could be fired for simply not looking happy enough. Grandpa Lewis did exceptionally well during the Depression, supporting his family on the tips he received as a Red Cap. My mother remembers that my grandmother used to have to sew reinforced linings into the pockets of all of Grandpa's pants because the weight of the pennies, nickels, dimes, and occasional quarters that he was given as tips would eventually rip the seams out. She also remembers the leathery texture Grandpa's hands took on from carrying so much baggage at the station. As the Depression deepened, the Grand Rapids train station cut back to two red caps, and Grandpa was let go. He briefly opened a small restaurant and finally became the first African-American cab driver in Grand Rapids, a job he held until his retirement in 1972 at 74 years old. Earl Lefty Lewis also pitched for many years in the minors of the Negro Baseball Leagues. His fondest memory of that time was pitching twice against Satchel Paige. As he did with most opposing pitchers, Satch hung Grandpa with two losses. My father's father... Herman E. Curtis was indeed a big band leader for most of his adult life. He headed many different musical groups, my favorite being Herman E. Curtis and the Dusky Devastators of the Depression, a name that by itself deserves all six of those exclamation points. Grandpa attended the Indiana Conservatory of Music and was a classically trained violinist. He also played the bass fiddle, the accordion, and the piano. Entertainment was an important part of life during the Depression, for people wanted to forget their troubles by going to the movies, sitting around the radio, and listening and dancing to live music. Grandpa and his bands were well known throughout Michigan during this time. Being an orchestra leader was Grandpa Curtis's night job. By day, he wore many different hats, among them those of a chauffeur, boat captain, and truck painter. He owned several businesses in Grand Rapids, in Wyoming, Michigan, at a time when laws prohibited African Americans from renting or holding title to land in these two cities. Grandpa did this by having a white friend put his name on all records. The flexibility, people skills, hustle, and willingness to work around unfair laws and situations that both of my grandfathers used allowed them to keep their families together during one of America's bleakest periods, a time that was especially hard on African Americans. Both of these men were fortunate and skilled enough to avoid the brunt of the Great Depression. The lives of Earl Lefty Lewis and Herman E. Curtis and the situations described in Bud Not Buddy are the exception, for the great majority of people suffered horribly during the period between 1929 and 1941. Parents often could not feed their children, so countless thousands of young people, some as young as eight years old, were abandoned or had to set out on their own in search of a meal and a warm place to sleep. These children survived the brutal life on the road by riding the rails, picking fruit, doing odd jobs, begging, stealing, or whatever was necessary to get food. Much of what I discovered about the Depression I learned through research in books which is a shame. I didn't take advantage of the family history that surrounded me for many years. I'm afraid that when I was younger and my grandparents and parents would start to talk about their lives during the Depression, my eyes would glaze over and I'd think, oh no, not those boring tall tales again, and I'd find the most convenient excuse I could to get away from them.
Now I feel a real sorrow when I think of all the knowledge, wisdom, and stories that have been forever lost with the deaths of my grandparents. Be smarter than I was. Go talk to grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, and other relatives and friends. Discover and remember what they have to say about what they learned growing up. By keeping their stories alive, you make them, and yourself, immortal. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce my daughter, Sydney Mackenzie Curtis. Sydney is the author of Mommy Says No, the song that Kim sings to Bud while sitting at the breakfast table with her brother Scott. She's going to sing it for you now. Mommy says no, Mommy says no, I'm missing you, don't wa ha ha ha. The building falls down, the building falls down, you get crushed, I don't wa ha ha ha. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program.